There have still been some great games to play this year, but the general feeling is that gaming in 2021 has been somewhat disappointing and all of the following titles didn't really help to argue otherwise. Now, while not outright bad by any means, well, some of them are, the games on this list all had massive potential and were hyped to high heaven, and whether because of issues with the development or plain old executive meddling, all failed to live up to the hype. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 most disappointing video games of 2021. Number 10, Ghost Runner Next Gen. Ghost Runner has had a hard run of it. The tough as nails actioner initially launched last year on last gen consoles and PC and didn't fare particularly well. While critics agreed that its demanding first person combat and pristine ray trace visuals clicked on PC, the PS4 and Xbox One ports were a technical nightmare, full of bugs and lacking the graphical flair of the well received version. Naturally, many fans assumed that these issues were simply due to the technical limitations of the hardware and that the announced next-gen versions would be flawless when they launched the next year. Well, 2021 came around, Ghost Runner got its PS5 and Xbox Series X relaunch, and things weren't quite as smooth as anticipated. Though an improvement on the previous releases, players still reported plenty of bugs and glitches that marred the experience. Now, Ghost Runner is an amazing game. It's just a shame that even these next-gen ports couldn't quite live up to the title's full potential. Number 9. Ninja Gaiden Master Collection The Ninja Gaiden Master Collection is far from the most disappointing remaster 2021 has seen, but it's certainly the most forgettable. And for a series this long overdue a comeback, that is such a bloody shame. Packaging the three last-gen Ninja Gaiden games into one neat release, there's nothing wrong with the Master Collection per se. I mean, these are the same spectacular games you remember, but that's kind of the issue. Overpriced ports in a world full of brilliant remakes like Resident Evil 2 and Crash Insane Trilogy just don't cut it anymore. At this price, the selling point needs to be more than mere accessibility, especially when all three of these excellent hack and slashes are available on Xbox backwards compatibility anyway, and at the time of recording anyway, you can't buy them separately. Now, the collection didn't have to feature full on remakes, nobody's asking for that amount of work, but some substantial tweaking would have been welcome and could have introduced the series to a whole new audience. Number 8, Biomutant. A game with as many delays as Biomutant was always going to encounter some ridiculously high expectations. Originally supposed to launch in 2018, the open world RPG finally dropped earlier this year to a swell of fan anticipation and it was fine. It was okay. It was certainly a video game, I'll tell you that. Unlike other games on this list, Biomutant wasn't a total disaster. It just wasn't all that exceptional in any one thing. The open world mechanics were solid enough but rote and familiar, and the same goes for the combat, exploration, story, and RPG elements. For a game this colourful, where you could so imaginatively customise your playable critter, the actual playing of it didn't quite hold up. Probably by nature of its many delays, it felt like a title a few years out of time. Still, there is an enjoyable enough experience here if you know what you're getting in for. It might not have changed the world like fans wanted it to, but its universe is still charismatic and inviting, and not a bad time at all. Number 7. Far Cry 6 Far Cry 6 is a game that, on paper anyway, should have been a runaway success. The gunplay is the best in the series, the open world is lushly detailed and realised, and play character Danny, the female version anyway, is a great protagonist with solid voice acting. And that's not to mention, the sequel also boasts the great actor Giancarlo Esposito, who relishes every second he's on screen as the villainous dictator Anton Castillo. So, why doesn't it work? Well, the issue is sadly predictable, the classic Ubisoft open world bloat. Far Cry 6 has absolutely no focus when it comes to its content. It opts for a quantity over quality approach, leaving the player with a lot of things to do admittedly, but few things that are actually memorable. Side quests are copied and pasted from the first hour to the 30th, while even main missions suffer from a general lack of spectacle. It's the kind of sandbox game that can give you an existential crisis, where you're running around a beautiful world and half enjoying yourself, but wondering at every stage, why? Number 6. Battlefield 2042 After Battlefield 5's disastrous launch, Battlefield 2042 was supposed to right the ship. Returning the series to a near future setting and promising to bring back the tone and style of fan favourite releases like Battlefield 3, this was touted as a proper next gen experience with 128 players fighting it out in epic all out war modes. 
And in fairness, that is exactly what the final game delivered. 2042 can be exhilarating, with an intense sense of scale unlike anything else in the genre. The only issue is, there isn't enough of it, and what is there is buggy as hell. As soon as the game hit early access, the complaints rolled in. Hit registration was terrible, weapon recoil was ridiculous, match balance was completely skewed, and vehicles were so overpowered that it made infantry combat a joke. Throw in a relative lack of content with only 22 launch weapons and a lack of attachments, and the whole thing felt like more of a start than a fully fledged release. Now, to their credit, DICE has already substantially improved the game throughout three updates and addressed some of the issues I've even mentioned here, but work still needs to be done. Number five, 12 minutes. Announced over six years ago, it's safe to say that 12 Minutes was one of the most anticipated indie games of the last generation. A top-down time loop story where players had to replay a period of time between 10 and 15 minutes, I think, I can't really remember exactly, before a cop breaks down their apartment door and kills them, there was a huge amount of intrigue going into this mysterious title. The game had major awards buzz in the run-up to launch as well, not least because the developers had courted Hollywood A-listers like Willem Dafoe, James McAvoy and Daisley Ridley to play the three lead characters. This performance pedigree, the sensational art style and a great marketing campaign had expectations through the roof. The actual game though, while still a lot of fun, wasn't quite the Oscar winner many were expecting. The central time loop mystery was well written in spots, but ultimately went off the rails with jaw-dropping twists towards the end that made it feel more like a silly B-movie than a proper serious affair. The central gameplay loop similarly had its moments, but the puzzles were so obtuse that along with the inherent repetition of this subgenre, made some players feel like they were just wasting their time. After all that hype, 12 minutes was only okay. Number 4, Back for Blood. Developers at Turtle Rock had never been able to fully escape the shadow of the two beloved Left 4 Dead games. Their first effort after working on that franchise, Evolve, was one of the biggest disappointments of its year. So with their latest games, the devs seemingly just shrugged and said, fine, whatever I said, whatever I did, I didn't mean it, I'll make you back for blood. As such, this game sees the studio return to four-player zombie killing mayhem as teams are tasked with gunning their way through undead hordes, special infected, and bosses. It looked like the spiritual successor everyone had been asking for, full of weapons, levels, and surprises to keep players engaged for years. The issue with the final release though is kind of hard to put a finger on. The elements for success are all there, but something about the gameplay just didn't quite click. It was too slow, not all that visceral, and the balance and flow of levels made for frustrating difficulty spikes. And then there was the card system, a bonkers approach to customization and leveling that made players pick specific buffs through an obtuse system every single match. It didn't work and just left fans scratching their heads. Number 3, Destruction All-Stars. It's been a while since Sony missed with a big console exclusive. The likes of The Last of Us Part 2 and Ghost of Tsushima ended the PS4 generation in style, while early PS5 titles like Demon's Souls and Spider-Man Miles Morales managed to completely avoid the launch title curse. Sadly, Destruction All-Stars wasn't so lucky. Initially set to drop alongside Sony's new machine, a last-minute delay pushed the multiplayer title to February 2021, where it launched as part of that month's PS Plus lineup. Even being part of that service didn't help it avoid a critical drubbing though, as it dropped to tepid reviews and a player base that quickly evaporated. Specialising in a brand of OTT colourful vehicular combat, Destruction All-Stars felt like a shell of a game, lacking the volume of content needed to make a live service title like this survive beyond the opening weekend. Had Sony originally stuck to its guns and sold this thing for $70, the response would have been much harsher though. Number 2, Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance is one of the most beloved RPGs ever released on the PS2. It's the kind of title that, even if you haven't played it, is spoken about with hushed reverence over how much it meant to a specific bracket of video game fans. Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance though is… well it's not a video game like that. A spiritual successor to the aforementioned Baldur's Gate, this new release didn't live up to its namesake. It launched riddled with bugs and a lack of polish, perhaps because the devs overstretched to release on both next-gen and current-gen machines. Even outside of the technical issues though, the core mechanics didn't stir anything in players. Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance is a mundane RPG, all things considered, one that skirts by on the shoulders of more impressive titles that came before it. Number 1, Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy Definitive Edition 
I know, I know, what else is there even to say about the GTA Definitive Edition at this point? This remastered collection of some of the most beloved open world games of all time should have been an easy home run, and instead Rockstar bashed itself in the head with its own baseball bat. Handed off to Grove Street Games, the team responsible for the similarly unimpressive anniversary mobile ports, each title in this collection suffered from dodgy controls, flat graphics, botched character models, frame rate issues, glitched missions, and so, so much more. San Andreas was seemingly hit the worst though. Their even player character CJ looks a bit weird, not to mention the supporting cast. Lacking other glaring omissions like the lack of a complete soundtrack when compared to the originals, and the definitive edition label kind of feels like a joke. So that's our list, what do you guys think down in the comments below? Were these as disappointing to you as they were to me? And is there anything else you would have swapped in here? Let us know while you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't know, I've been Josh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.